Precious Child is a nonprofit organization that works to support children in need with opportunities and resources. We understand that families need different things to thrive. What items do they need? What resources do they need access to to come alongside their peers and really thrive as an adult? We believe that all children should be on a level playing field, and so that's something that all of our programs work to do. There is a huge need to serve foster parents. When we serve foster parents, they can foster better and they can foster longer. They can visit us here in the boutique. We've hosted some of our trainings here in the building, which always include free childcare. You can get your visit done. You can check in with your caseworker. You can get your fingerprints done. And at the same time, you can come in and grab whatever you need for even just that week because we see the families so often. We help out low-income families in the area. We have emergency relief, food, clothing, hygiene products. We have about 1,300 families that get referrals through the government assistance agencies. And those families get to come and shop for free. We have a gym that we offer free exercise classes to anybody in the community, family friendly. We run sports programs. We have cheerleading, flag football, soccer, basketball, field hockey. We have art classes and cooking classes. We actually have a kids area, so while mom and dad are in here shopping or getting assistance, the kids can go and play. They have a safe space. They have internet access there also. We have about 30 computers. We try and focus on different circumstances that these individual families are having and then try and train them to change their future themselves. I have two programs that I'm currently implementing. One of them is personal finance, where I teach participants about basic life skills that sometimes seem very common sense to us, but for others, they struggle with that. The other program is called Grand Cares. There were 2.6 million grandchildren that are raised by their grandparents. So we have a program that fills in the need. So the first one is to provide community resources for grandparents. The second one is to provide life skills for their grandchildren. And the third one is to provide webinars for service providers that specifically work with grand families. We work on the issues of child abuse and neglect, domestic violence and homelessness, and what we feel we do that's very unique in this area is that we focus on the intersection of those three issues. We know that it's not unusual that people come into our care needing help from another domain or another program area at Family Tree and we work to integrate our services at the highest and best level. We know that when we have kiddos that are in a home where domestic violence is occurring, we know that even if they haven't been physically harmed, what they've seen, observed and heard will often be with them for a lifetime and so that's a critical reason why we need to address that through advancement of services and connectivity of resources in the community as well as potentially any clinical services that can be offered. So the partnership we have with Adams County is really focused on making sure that we are providing services that help prevent child abuse and neglect, but also help families move out of poverty and help break that cycle of poverty so that kids have the skills that they need to be successful in school and hopefully go on to have lifelong success. When you live on the street and you're isolated, nobody talks to you. Um, in fact, most often people do everything they can not to talk to you. Our survival kits, they have just some basic essential items that we all need. And it allows us to connect with them, um, just to, you know, conversation starter. That's where it starts. Our only hope in, in getting any improvement for these people is if we're able to connect with them. Servicios de la Raza is a nonprofit, so we do a lot of different things. It's for everyone. In English, it's services for the people. They have training programs to help get you a job. They have a lot of programs for those that are recently out of jail. They have a lot of programs for basic needs like homelessness. They do mental health. They have a lot of legal services that they provide completely free to the community. My specific position here is to help those in need that are going through emergency situations such as homelessness, if they don't have food, if they don't have clothing, different things like that. 
The Denver Indian Center is somewhat comprehensive based upon our name and, and the services that we provide. We have two major programs in place. The first is the workforce program where we help and assist American Indians to help them advance their career or actually even start a career. Everything from introducing them to job openings or opportunities to training to prepare them uh, for a career. The other program is the Honoring Fatherhood program, which is more of a life skills type of a program, understanding how they make their choices with respect to parenting relationships. We also have a food bank that's open to the community and people that come are eligible once a month based upon some minimal criteria. Its focus is to support vulnerable Native American families. Most of our families that we work with are involved in the child welfare system. When you look at the statistics and the population numbers and whatnot in terms of identified Indian child welfare cases, Adams County is the third highest and we've been very fortunate to contract with most of the metro counties in Denver including Adams to provide collaborative services to support these families. HIPPI stands for Home Instruction for Parents of Preschool Youngsters. And the way this program works, it's 30 weeks and we have four home visitors and the home visitors are trained in the HIPPI curriculum. And they visit parents in their home for one hour a week for 30 weeks. And in that visit, they teach math and science and reading and gross motor activities. Each activity is about 15 minutes and it's all in one packet. So every visit, the family gets a new packet, they get trained on how to do it, and when the home visitor leaves, the parent can then practice those activities with their own children. So we really believe that the parent is the first and most important teacher in a child's life. And it's a great way for these parents to really learn how their child learns and prepare them for kindergarten, how to be successful in school. Senior Hub is an agency that supports aging adults in our communities and we have several core programs that service our seniors in multiple capacities. Our Meals on Wheels program serves about 200 people a day. We also have a Senior Solutions arm, which is our resource arm. We also have an Adult Day Center. We really treat folks that have beginning dementia, Alzheimer's, that need that support during the day and their loved ones have a safe place to place them and they have lots of recreation and fun with our directors. So we have a lot of robust programming at the Senior Hub. We operate the A-Lift contract for Adams County. That's a human service-based transportation system designed to provide transportation to those over the age of 60. It is a fare-free system. We also have services available to persons under 60 who have mobility impairments and are not eligible for accessoride that will accommodate a wheelchair, we're fully accessible, and our priority right now is medical trips. Another program at the Resource Center is something called Chores, and Chores provides in-home cleaning. So it's deep cleaning, people can qualify just by being over the age of 65, and they can get set up for a cleaning of their homes. It's big, and it's growing. We work with people with disabilities to overcome obstacles, to live independently in a community, with a dignified life. Our programs are based on an independent living philosophy which believes in consumer control. The aging population is supposed to double in the next five to ten years and with that comes acquired disabilities such as visual impairment or mobility issues and these people are going to have needs that we can provide and meet for them to help them to maintain and achieve their independence. Adams County and other communities are all on board with keeping people in their homes close to their families, and thriving and surviving in an independent way. And this idea of self-directed independence is critical to achieving that goal.